So, sir, when you started with the Pawai project, I'm sure when you had pictureized this particular project, I'm sure you were aware of what kind of success rate you will get, or you did not know that you know this is kind of success I'm going to get out of this project. I had a lot of dreams, but really, I had no idea the extent of success I would get is what I got. I mean. I didn't even dream that I would get 1% of what I got. So, uh, I'm really truly blessed. Not that we didn't put in effort to mm. do much more. But at the time when we started, it was a, it was a faraway land. There was no access road. Uh, there was a two-lane road coming to Hawaii. You know, very bad excesses, difficult to do. Quarry land, 20 trees and then 250 acres of land. We planted more than 4 lakh trees now gardens, schools, hospitals, etc. All these grew incrementally over a period of 35 years. So, as a young person, as all entrepreneurs, or even the youngsters, when they see a legend like you, they always want to know how they came upon such success. So, how would you define you reached to this success or what is the mantra you uh, follow to get that kind of success? Like, I'm not asking for a shortcut. Of course, every hard work is there, but we, as a person who is looking, at, you know, outside, that oh, this is Niranjan sir, and this is his, you know, huge success rate, or this is his huge journey. But what would you define your mantra for your success? Well, I always aspired in order to grow. The idea was that uh, if I did real estate, I wanted to make it big. If I wanted to do education, I wanted to do it big. If I wanted to do a hospital, I wanted to do great work. If I want to act as part of policy of the Maharashtra. I worked uh, for Balasaheb Thakare. I worked on the slum rehabilitation policy. I'm a co-signatory of the policy which was created for Maharashtra. I always thought that I must do something significant in everything that I do. And I think that carries me on to me. Not that I did fail. My first business was in textiles. I failed it. And I had to you know, move on to real estate. So, I mean, uh, the point is that when you take up so many items, uh, the thing is that even if you fail, they recede behind you. <laughs> so, yeah. in reality, some people take up two jobs and they may lose one or they may lose both. I take 100 jobs. <laughs> so, what happens <laughs> is even if 25 succeed or 20 succeed, mm. wow, everybody claps and says, Mr. Hiratandani is very successful. In reality, they don't know what I have not succeeded in it. And uh, so I'm constantly trying lots and lots of many things in every field of activity that I do. Mm. Some of them, many of them have become super successes in, in my mind. I mean, uh, people, people don't even know or understand some of the successes of what we do. For example, in Hawaii, we made uh, 120 buildings. Not one single building leaks. Yeah. It sounds like a very small thing. Believe you me, for the 7,000 apartments of people who live there, it's a fantastic thing that not a single building leaks. Yeah. Now, these are the, what should I say, little big contributions that we have done. Mm. Or, uh, and I don't even mention it most of the time, it just happens. And all these little things keep on happening in your life and the way you work on it. And that's what I think makes you, my life fulfilling. So if any small project or any other project which doesn't work and does not cater that kind of success, does it pinch you till now or does it, it doesn't bother? I'm human. <laughs> if you're getting hurt on something, I'm getting more hurt on something. And uh, of course I feel hurt. But I, I leave the hurt behind me fairly quickly. Mm. So, uh, if you speak against me, or you hurt me, or you don't speak well to me, so I'm going to feel hurt. I feel very hurt. Okay. But then, after a little while, I just put it behind me and I look forward and say, next time maybe you'll be better with me. So, I, I, don't, uh, I don't look, I don't live life looking at the rear view mirror too much. Uh, I look more forward and say, come on now, what is tomorrow with you? And that is more important to me. Or even just now or today, what can I 
actually achieve today? What can I do with you today? What can we do together today? Instead of saying, oh, last few years, we didn't do anything successful <laughs> last year. Oh, that, that's behind me. I don't even bother about it. For me, it's a dead thing. And yeah. I don't even look at that part. So it's always looking forward. What is it? And I love that question. If you ask me what I did in 2022, I have to think. What I want to do in 2023 is... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm at it. So, sir, you make it sound very easy. Like, for a person like me also to... There are moments where you are like, you are you can I let, let it go, you know? We have that laid-back kind of laziness. Are you saying you don't get lazy at all? Of course I get lazy. But when I'm getting lazy, I read a book. When I get lazy, I go to a party. When I get lazy, I hear some good music. Or I'm learning the organ just now. So, yeah. I get into learning that organ. So, uh, I have an Apple tutor who comes to teach me when I'm lazy. lazy. <laughs> so, what happens is that uh, I have those lazy moments, of course, like anybody else. But then I fill it up with something which... Uh, which is productive. I don't know about being productive. Yeah. But uh, I just fill it up, you know. I mean, but that's not laziness. It is because I'm not doing what I should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> but you're learning something or yeah, the other, so right? I kind of uh, substitute it with something else which is there for the moment. So don't feel, uh, you know, I think uh, doing something, the same thing all the time, sometimes you need a break and disconnect. True. Yeah. So it's more about not picking up the same exact thing for 24 hours, mm. but maybe breaking it up and then getting back to it. So the excitement remains. So you have become like a legend when it comes to be real estate or for entrepreneurs everywhere. Who is your role model? Oh, plenty. I don't have one. So let's take the real estate side. Mm. And, uh, if I was looking at myself in 1981, I would say Dr. Baker, who made Nariman Point buildings. I went and checked all the Nariman Point buildings. I found that the four best buildings there were made by Mr. Maker. So that was, he was my role model. Like, I must see what he does. Mm -hmm. Then I looked at, for the next 10 years, I looked at Mr. Lokanwala. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Raheja, who was doing in Bandra, in Kar, in Vasova, and all that. And I looked up to him and I went and saw his building. I went to Delhi, I saw Mr. Thirty Singh's uh, DLF uh, part of the building. Uh, then I had Mr. Lokanwala, then after that, uh, so what happens is every five to ten years, I have a kind of a different person I look up to, who kind of uh, gives me guidance, gives me mentors, and uh, stuff like that, you know. Uh, Twenty-two years ago, I met uh, Dada J.P. Vaswani, a spiritual mentor, mm. and I found, you know, a lot to learn from him. So I kind of fall, fell in love with him and uh, took up, uh, you know, uh, what he did. and. Uh, keep on hearing so many people to do good work. In personal life, uh, there are so many people I look up to, Mr. Ratan Tata, for instance, <coughs> good friend of mine, and uh, I look up to people. So, is there one person? No, no, no. I have plenty of good people I will look up to. Deepak Parekh, for instance, Mr. Del Kota, for instance, in the financial world. All these people are wonderful. They they have so much to teach you. But let me share with you. Mm. I've learned a lot of things from people who have no names. So I would uh, go on sites and my chief engineer and engineers would teach me a lot of things. And then some junior guy would tell me, Sir, you know, that shoring on that side, we don't need to do. If we do this, 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 we will do that. Uh, we'll be able to not do shoring and do this particular project. Mm. And I calculated that would save me five crores of rupees. Mm. Now, this has not come from my yeah. chief, yeah. but it has come from a site engineer. So, you know, you have to be a learner from anybody and everybody. Mm. And uh, once you are willing to learn, you should have the humility to learn. And not believe that you know it all. And I don't believe I know it all, even today on any subject that I have. Because there's so much more to learn all the time. And now it's easier to learn. Yeah. Go, go to chat GPT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. So, sir, currently, uh, 
urbanization has become the theme of you know decade gone by and the theme which is going to come and we are noticing there's a rise not only happening in bombay or mumbai but we are seeing also the cities like bangalore chennai kolkata delhi becoming the urban housing destination so post covid what we notice a stark change is that cities like ahmedabad and hyderabad are also in a rise so if you hypothetically ask if you had to start your career again in which city you would have built this empire cities are about opportunities all business is about opportunity i go where the opportunity is most mumbai was one such opportunity and there are so many cities where the opportunities would be delhi metropolitan region uh, the ncr region mumbai region pune region bangalore region mm. chennai region hyderabad uh, ahmedabad now so the opportunities keep on growing uh, we live and die but business will go on forever yeah. and uh, new opportunities will come old opportunities will go away mumbai still has the leadership in that opportunity mm. and uh, and the other ma- major cities of india also have it the second tier and third tier cities also have an opportunity so yeah. the scale of opportunity that we justify need to leave the metropolitan areas and go to the smaller tier but if i had to start i wouldn't mind starting from any of the two t- uh, tier 2 or tier 3 cities but as grow mm. you need to move to the tier for example there's so many developers from bangalore who are now coming to Mumbai, Mumbai yeah. it's not that Bangalore doesn't have opportunities. They are only seeing more opportunities in Mumbai at this point of time. They may go to NCR, they may go to any other place, including uh, uh, Gujarat and places like that. So opportunities will keep on changing every season, every couple of years. My son went to Dubai and built the now the second tallest residential tower in the world, the 23 Marina. Mm. So Darshan did that. So that was an opportunity that he saw at that point of time and he was able to create that building which is very beautiful. So all in all, mm. let's say, let's take the case of Reliance. Yeah. Uh, 40 years ago, 45 years ago, Reliance was more about textiles, 99% textiles. Yeah. What is the percentage of textiles in the armory of Reliance today? Hardly less than one percent. Less than one percent. So the question is, if uh, if a company like Reliance, in order to grow, has to keep on changing even its line of business, okay, forget the location. Uh, real estate is similar, and uh, any other business is similar. Keeps on changing, opportunities will grow, happen, come, go. And it doesn't matter where you are. You mm. have to, you have to seek the opportunities, seek it, and uh, grow it. There's no issues on that. True. So, good. You mentioned about Gift City. I wanted to ask you. In one of your interview, you had mentioned that that particular project in Gift City you were going to complete in two years. But you had to complete in one year because you got a call from PMO office that he will come to inauguration and you finish in one year. So what were the challenges during that time you, you faced to complete that project in one year? Don't ask me. It was a big one. Uh, when we got a call from the Prime Minister's office that we had to do the building in one year, it was very challenging. Mm. First of all, it was my first building in uh, in Gujarat. Yeah. We didn't have any contractors in Mumbai who were actually ready to go there and build it in one year. So we had to deal with a local contractor. All the approvals and other aspects of it and the challenges of the local level were unknown to us. There were many. Mm-hmm. And uh, But, you know, we really uh, worked uh, day and night, night and day, and a lot of tensions and all that for us. But we managed to do it. And... Uh, I also learned a lot that uh, when you asked to do it by a person called Prime Minister Modi, uh, you just do it, you know. <laughs> it's pretty lot of fun when you finish it. Yeah. But until then, there is a lot of pressure on you. So I think it was a great learning in order to make the impossible possible. Mm. And uh, you can see it in him. He's doing it all the time now. Mm. And uh, so we did that in one year, which was very exciting. In fact, it was 11 months. One month we did the interiors. We mm. built the international stock exchange done by the Bombay Stock Exchange there. The fastest stock exchange in the world. Yeah. Fastest. So I think uh, opportunities 
the law challenges so but that's fun so recently i visited the gift city and i saw the building of hiran and mani it looks spectacular from the outside as well from inside so will we be seeing more projects coming in in the uh, gift city we haven't fixed on it now but we certainly study it we study opportunities all the time and uh, we certainly putting up a data center which is coming up and uh, we hope that uh, we will be excited about another building too but we haven't taken any other position today as of just now okay so abhi uh, residential ka koi matlab plan nahi in terms of the township if we pick coming. it up we will probably do a commercial okay and uh, we have to good will we have to people who are already our clients and each and every one of them wants to grow with us so uh, we probably do a commercial if we do it okay so sir what is your thought process for panvel and alibaba because i have noticed uh, hiranandani group has seen the potential far ahead for the pavai and thane projects but what is for your panvel and alibaba where do you think uh, soon the market will mature and the results will keep uh, showing soon at the end of this year yeah yeah you will have the cross harbor bridge which connects to uh, panvel yeah uh, we will have the uh, elevated road from uh, chirle to the western uh, to the freeway mumbai to the freeway you will see a uh, railway line the central railway is being extended from panvel to kajan which mm. means covering the whole of panvel and all the areas that we are working on uh, you're going to see stupendous the whole uh, area of naina uh, extension of sitko and of course uh, the navi mumbai airport yeah a combination of all that in next two years is going to see prices in panvel double in the next two years so if you want to uh, you know want to beat the market you have to invest in panvel with us so sir panvel and uh, uh, alibaba was the dream projects that you came up and you made sure that you know uh, projects would come from hiran and nani there also there, are there any other particular areas where you see such potential no one has seen so far because wherever you have touched upon then of course we have noticed a certain trend lot of residential buildings lot of township from other projects starts coming in from other brands do you have any other location such in mind to explore not at this point of time but i promise you in the next one year when you come back i will uh, tell you some new location or the other because we keep our eyes open on the opportunities that we uh, mm. see and see so I, i i think we are open to uh, you know look at future locations mm. so we study in depth the opportunities which we will get and then we like to build scale so i mean it's not easy to come to mumbai city and make scale so we yeah. have to go outside and see what we can be done so that's exactly what panvel and alibaba are all about and we see that as a great future so for the city and for the project also it's like that so really great right